Hey guys. Oh. <clears throat> Pardon me. Maybe I just haven't spoken yet this morning. <laughs> Sorry. Um, today is Favorite Book Friday. And the book is The Soil Will Save Us. Now, for those of you who are Christians, I'm not trying to say that you should read this book. I can just see a lot of Christians out there having some angst over the title of the book. So I'm, I'm just going to say, I don't think she's Christian. I don't even think she's saying that to treat the soil like God, or I don't believe she's Wiccan or anything. It's just, it's just the title that she chose. And I have to admit that I picked up the book because it said the soil will save us and had pictures of roots and plants and stuff. So um, she is a liberal. And she believes in climate change. And so if you are a conservative Republican, hear her out. <laughs> if you find that her, her liberality bothers you, try to turn that part of your brain off for a little bit because the book is really worth reading. What, what she has done with this book is she has taken from all the different permaculture, renewing the soil without plowing, people and she has compiled it into a book to show what the results are. She makes statements about how you can't really use the scientific method when you're talking about results in this situation because it is not a controlled system. And these people did not wait and experiment for five years with just one part of the system to see if it was one part of the system that was working. What they were doing was they were changing things constantly as they saw that something worked, they implemented it. As they saw something didn't work, they took that out and implemented something else. They're, they're doing exactly what I do, where I have a greenhouse out there that has many different kinds of beds to see which one I like best. And I'm doing it all at the same time because I want to compare them to each other. And it's not very scientific. It's just what I'm storing in my brain as I make deductions about, well, this works and this doesn't work. And she's talking about how these scientists are doing the same thing. Rather than being able to write things down on paper and have it make sense, what they're watching for is the health of their soil and the health of their animals as they eat what is grown by the soil and um, taking evidence that, what did they, is it empirical? Is empirical evidence the one I'm looking for? They're taking evidence that is... Homegrown evidence. Evidence that doesn't show up on paper, but shows up in more insect life, that shows up in more uh, biodiversity, that shows up in sleeker, fatter, healthier cows, that shows up in more uh, birds showing up, that shows up in plants not having been attacked by pests because they weren't monocultures. And um, I have to say that as far as as far as her politics goes, she is not forceful about sharing her political views. She just is kind of she's I think she's a pretty good journalist. She takes a view from a conservative side that doesn't belong believe in global warming and she takes it from a liberal side that definitely believes in global warming and she says these two can live together in this situation because the the solution for both the liberal and the conservative side is the same. And the, the more conservative side is more concerned with results and being able to feed people. The liberal side is about, let's save the planet. They both do the same thing. Um, she talks about the results that they've had in these fields that have been in production this way for about five years. And how uh, in some spots they had their biodiversity and, and the mining of the soil by the roots of these plants was so amazing that you could take a four foot stake and just drive it all the way down into the ground. Because what instead of using a plow to aerate the soil, the roots had aerated the soil and were feeding themselves and they weren't putting on manure anymore. What they were doing was they were mob grazing their fields after the crop had been taken in and that the, the crushing down of the grass by the hooves and the quick eating so that no one particular plant was left standing all of this allowed the land to be able to absorb water and it left the, the surface of the ground a little uneven so that it slowed 
water flow across the countryside. It, it, it was really, in fact, I, I still haven't finished it. I think I have two chapters left. And it's one of those books that you just really can't put down. And it gives huge credibility and huge credence to what people are trying to do with permaculture. Um, what she's talking about is not what you would necessarily consider conventional permaculture because what she's doing is she's talking about conventional farming and huge tracts of land being able to be healed and still have huge results but she's not necessarily talking about trees um, she's talking about um, the mixing of grasses and the mixing of herbs and the mixing of crop plants to feed and take care of the soil and of grazing land being really important and, and using fields as grazing land in a mob grazing situation and just tying the whole system together. Where a lot of times in permaculture, official permaculture, you're talking a lot about berms, big earthworks, and swales that redirect water and about trees and creating permanent forest garden, forest food systems. She's talking about how to get crops out of the land and um, and trees are part of that. I mean, yes, trees are part of that, but I, it kind of seems to me like what she's talking about with the trees is that as the environment gets better, maybe the trees will come, you know, or just that she's, she's trying to give a hopeful view of our food system that it, being able to re reverse desertification and to rebuild soils um, without having to do uh, chemical fertilizers, chemical um, herbicides and stuff, but to be able to heal the ground and allow it to feed us with, as kind of a side note to what it's already doing by just feeding the soil. Brilliant book. Uh, the author is Kristen Olson. And again, I would not consider myself conservative and I would not consider myself liberal. I kind of am a mishmash and I think most people are, when they're honest, they're a mishmash of the two. Because in my opinion, I think that our political parties try to pit us against each other. Instead of being able to see the things we have in common, they try to say, well, if you believe in this, you can't believe in this. And I think that we need to cut the crap on that and be able to look at it as friends and as reasoning human beings with brains who can see through the crap when it comes to uh, pitting our, us against each other when it comes to our political views and to be able to see truth when we see it, recognize truth when we see it, and um, play nice. So, fantastic book. And the books that I'm telling you about are books that I believe could stand alone. Any of the books that I have given you so far to read, if you follow the principles in those books all by themselves, you'll have success. And so when you bring them all together, I think it gives you a balance to be able to look at things. Oh, th there's so much to pull from, and yet it's all saying the same thing. And so um, all of these authors write a little bit differently, but they all write in a very hopeful tone. So that you, and, and I love that because then you, you feel like I can make progress. What I'm doing does make a difference. The one caveat I will give you is that what she says is exactly what I've said is that it takes five years to grow good soil. It takes five years to have observed your soil long enough to understand what its needs are. It takes five years over that time to build your soil up if you're using deep mulch or if you're using conventional watering and trees and and if you're using ground covers, it, ta it just it just does. For some reason, the magic number is five. That if you're going from desert nasty, and whether your input is water and seeds or mulch and animal grazing, it just takes time to resuscitate that soil bacteria so that it can support life and help your, your plants. And it's an amazing journey and it's super exciting. I mean, if, you, if you're into permaculture and into natural uh, growing and systems rather than just gardening, the things that you're doing are, are out of this world amazing science because you're observing what works and you're changing things and twitching things and figuring out how things thrive. Isn't that exciting? 
not to have to necessarily put it down on paper, but to see the results and know that if you just get out of its way to some degree and, and kind of pop in occasionally and put the right thing in at the right time, that it will, it will just be better every year. And that's what I really like about permanent gardening and permanent food forests and systems like that is that um, uh, so you don't necessarily have to reseed areas. You can just give them enough water and protect the little plants when they come up with some mulch and the next year you'll have seeds there that you never planted because your soil pH and everything has changed. Your your bacteria has changed in that time so that now that soil can, can support more biodiversity and so it does. The seeds just come up when they're ready to come up and when they can survive and I just think that's amazing. So. I think this is the first political rant that I've had, and I hope you guys didn't feel too ranted, um, and I hope you enjoy the book. We'll talk to you later.